AJ Bell is a comprehensive DIY investing service with plenty of choice and support and was one of the first in the country to offer self-invested personal pensions. We think it's one of the best investing platforms out there. Watch as we do a website run through and give it our steps to investing score. Hi, I'm Marcus De Silva and welcome to the Steps to Investing product and service reviews where we look at the UK's major investing platforms and then review essential parts of the business to help you find the right service for your investing needs. My business partner Simon Longfellow and I have over 30 years of investing industry experience between us, having worked at investment platforms as well as the companies that run and manage investment funds. It means we know exactly what you need to look for when it comes to choosing investments and investment services. Now our reviews are gonna focus on two types of platform. We've got DIY platforms, which are pretty full service and wide ranging in terms of the products they offer. And then what we call do it with me platforms, sometimes known as robo advisors or digital wealth managers, which tend to be quicker and easier to get investing, but a bit more limited in terms of the service and investments they offer. Now you can find this review and many, many more on our website totally for free. So please go to stepstoinvesting.com. Now, AJ Bell is one of the more established players in the market, sat at number three, just behind Interact Investor and Hargreaves Lansdowne in terms of customers. It was set up in 1995 by the eponymous Andy Bell to bring pensions to the masses. And these guys are exactly what we like in terms of flag waving for long-term investing. They hold regular events with fund managers and companies which customers can attend in person or online. And they publish good quality content, including Shares Magazine, which is packed full of investment know-how. The services and products are pretty wide ranging and the costs are mid-range. In this review, we're gonna assess four areas of the business, the investment accounts available, the kinds of investments you can make, the extra services that they offer, and then the all important costs. We'll then finish with our overall rating for the platform. Of course, if you've got any comments, just leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for all of our latest videos. All right, let's get on to having a little look at the site. As you can see, very attractive red and white. I mean, it's a really easy to use site. Um, you know, really like the look and feel of it. Here's Andy Bell, who's its chief executive. They've got plenty of free guides. The educational material is really good. It's very front and center. You can see Shares Magazine here. We'll get on to how you sort of get access to that. Plenty of videos and articles. I mean, this is typical of a full fat DIY service, really. There's lots to do, really, within its site. We're starting off with accounts, um, the key ways in which you kind of invest. And again, as you'd expect with a DIY site, they've kind of got the full works here. So we're going to have a look at some of those. First of all, I just sort of say, you know, cash. They offer access to uh, different providers, different cash uh, accounts that are provided by, by other banks, etc., cetera, um, through what they call transit accounts. So you deposit your money in, you then pick a particular amount of time that you want to lock your money away for and, and, and the sort of rate of interest that you'll get for that. Then the transit account will move your money into, into this bank account here. We've got Brown Shipley here. Lock it away for that nine months. And then when, it's, when that term is over, we'll come back into your transit account there. So they've got lots of different um, options there. You can see the shorter term ones um, that we were having a look at there. Let's have a look. And then you see we've got slightly longer amounts of time that you can lock your cash away for. I mean, generally when you're investing, you wanna um, have three to six months of costs in cash that's readily available. But um, you know that's gonna be readily really available. This is still about locking your money away for, for certain amounts of time. So it might not be appropriate for that sort of rainy day fund, um, but still plenty of, of cash options there, which we think is quite interesting. Okay, next we're gonna have a look at uh, pensions. You know, uh, AJ Bell was one of the first execution only brokers to offer these, uh, these private pensions, these SIP, self-invested personal pensions, when they first came out in the 90s. Um, and you know, they're the masters of it. You can see up here in the top nav, they've got plenty of kind of materials. 
um, and different things to look at when it comes to saving for retirement. Um, just as a reminder, you have your state pension, which you pay for through national insurance contributions. You need 35 years of those to get the full state pension, which is about £179 a week. And then you've got other pension options as well. Usually you have a workplace pension that's offered to you, particularly since auto enrolment was introduced, I think in 2012, um, which basically automatically enrolls you into your, your company pension plan. And that tends to be you contribute something to that through your salary, then your employer will usually give you something as well, and then you'll get some uh, tax relief as well. And on top of that, you can also have your own private pension. Um, and a SIP is, is one of these private pensions. Um, basically, it, it's, it's the one that enables you to invest very widely. It's kind of full choice. That's what a kind of a SIP offers you. Um, and between your workplace and your and your and private pensions, you can contribute up to forty thousand pounds a year and get basic tax relief on that, or one hundred percent of earnings, whichever sort of is lower. Um, and um, you'll get a basic rate of or, or your basic rate of tax paid back into straight into that account. So for every four pounds you put into a SIP, you'll get an extra pound paid into it by HMRC. And if you're a higher rate payer as well, you can claim that extra, you can claim extra relief through self-assessment. So it's really, really generous. And then all of that money, once that money's in there and you invest it in whatever you kind of want to invest in, it then grows tax-free. So there's no capital gains tax, no dividend taxes, no tax interest, nothing, okay? So any gains are completely tax-free. And then when you hit 55, you can access it. Uh, that's rising to 57 in 2028. Um, and uh, then you can do what you like with the pot, really. 25% of that pot is tax-free. The other 75% will be taxed uh, um, with income tax. Um, and you've got a, you know, a number of different options when you get to that stage. You can either just draw that pot down or you can buy a guaranteed income stream you now as an annuity. So they're really, really good. And, you know, um, uh, you know, really put you in full control, really, of, of saving for your retirement. So there's lots of stuff, you know, these, as I said, AJ Bell, one of the sort of original execution-only brokers to offer this, plenty of stuff um, that they allow you to go through, loads of good educational material as well, as you can see here, there's lots of guides and stuff. And, and you know, and, and, and what you can choose to invest in, considering this is a big full fat service, is very, very wide ranging. So it makes the SIP really attractive um, uh, from this service. So that's your pension. And then, so that's your key goal. I mean, that's the main thing that most of us will, you know, invest for really, will be for our pensions, funding our retirement. But for everything else, you know, um, you've got also an ISA, a stocks and shares ISA. So this is another type of account. It's another government incentivized account. And what comes with this, the benefits that come with this is you're allowed in a tax year, so that's April 6th through to April 5th, uh, you're allowed to invest up to £20,000 into, into this account, this ISA, and any gains are tax-free. So similar to a pension in that respect, no capital gains tax on, on any gains, no uh, taxes and dividends or interest. So, you know, if you put £20,000 in there, picked, you know, tomorrow's Apple and it went to a million pounds, there still be no taxes on, on any of that. So that's, that's the really great thing about ISAs um, and I suppose SIPs as well. So between those two things, you know, given your £40,000 limits for your, your pension, your £20,000 for your ISA, I mean, it should cover most things. If not, then you have got uh, a dealing account here as well. So they offer those two. And this is kind of like anything extra that you might want to be investing for. Um, and I think, there's no tax privilege with this, so any gains could potentially be subject to, to tax. But then you do have these thresholds where you don't need to pay any, um, any tax under those thresholds. Um, and, you know, so that includes things um, like capital gains tax. You won't uh, pay any taxes on capital gains up to 12300 So that's basically when you, when you um, invest in something and the value of it goes up and you book a profit, you won't pay any taxes until that profit reaches £12,300 in a tax year. So you can use that, plus the fact that you've got uh, up to a, a £2,000 um, uh, income from, from shares, from dividends, 
uh, that's a threshold f for there as well. So you don't pay any taxes under that amount um, and a thousand pounds on interest as well. So you can use those allowances to not pay any taxes either when you're just using a dealing account like this. Anyway, so nonetheless, it, it, it has those accounts available too. And then I think what was quite interesting is they, they sort of talk, they've grouped together the different options that we have investing for children. So here we can see we've got a few different um, options here. But, um, you know, clearly kids, you know, they, they are needing support more and more. We're seeing runaway house prices. There's all sorts of um, uh, reasons why, why you might need to help them out a little bit. I mean, the, the other one is the average debt generally when coming out of university is now um, about £40,000, I think. So, you know, um, they might have it tough. You might want to help them out. You get these separate allowances that, that you're allowed um, for, for children. So you can set up a junior ISA and put up to £9,000 a year into that. And it's totally separate from your own £20,000 um, uh, allowance. And then you can even set them up a junior SIP. Now granted, I mean, that is an awful long time, many, many years of investments potentially growing. Um, uh, so it could be a really incredible thing for them. I mean, it could be 57 years. I mean, it'd probably rise higher when those kids are maybe adults or reaching retirement age or when they can access that. But still, at least 57 years in the market. I mean, that's some exceptional returns potentially. And with that, you can put up to £12,880 a year and you'll still get that basic rate of tax relief on that as well. So they'll top it up to 3,600, I think it is. Uh, yes, 3,600. So yeah, so they have those on offer too. Not every service offers this. Um, and then they've also got a junior dealing account and these come with lower fees, which we're gonna, we're gonna sort of discuss in a little bit. So plenty of, of options for your children there. And then lifetime ICEs. So these are a sort of nuanced ICE that you can open up. So you can see some of the details here. Uh, you have to be between the age of 18 and 39 to open one. Out of that £20,000 limit, you can put up to £4,000 in a, into a, a lifetime ISA. So within a tax year, you can have a lifetime ISA, you can have a stocks and shares ISA, but they're still bound by that kind of £20,000 limit. So if you put 4,000 into your lifetime ISA, which is the maximum in a tax year, then you've got 16,000 left basically, which can go into your stocks and shares ISA. So you can have two different types of ISAs opened up in a tax year, just not two of the same. You have to be between these ages. You can put up to 4,000 pounds a year. The government will then give you a 25% bonus. So they'll give you an extra thousand pound if you put up to 4,000 pound um, into it. And you can keep doing that until you turn 50 and they'll keep giving you that 25% bonus. What's the catch? You can only use it for one or two things. A first time house up to the value of 450,000 pounds, or you can use it forever you like, but only at the age of 60. So it kind of acts as a semi pension vehicle or your first time house kind of thing. So they do offer this. I think the one thing to mention about AJ Bell is none of the ices that they offer are flexible. So you technically can get flexible ices, and this means you can sort of take money out of it and you know, within a tax year and then when you put it back in it's not double counted so that's what a flexible ISA is is that it enables you to use it a lot more like a bank account um, and it won't keep counting when you put money back in it counting against against that uh, that limit that you're allowed of twenty thousand pounds they don't offer that here with um, AJ AJ Bell so that's just one sort of like downside I'd say um, to the whole uh, offering here but all in all pretty comprehensive so we scored it four and a half out of five okay the next bit we're going to have a look at is the investments that are on offer and I think this is a DIY service so it's going to be full fat you're going to get loads and loads of choice that's the whole point of this is that you can really root around in whatever you want whether it's individual investments like shares or any type of fund out there they're basically going to have it and so if we just start with some of the shares um, you know there there are an awful lot of shares out there so um uh, you know they 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 have them all here sort of listed it's a bit clunky the way in which you sort of search for these things but if you know what you're looking for you can sort of type in the name or the ticker which is sort of like a shortened version of that too plenty to root around in they've also just going to mention the ipos as well you know qu qu this is something that um uh, more execution only brokers are wanting retail investors to get involved or at least give them the option of getting involved in because 
quite a lot of value can be created when companies come to the market for the very first time. So an IPO means an initial public offering and it's when a private company for the very first time decides to offer some of its shares onto a stock market so that then investors can buy those shares and start trading with them and that's when it becomes a public company and with that will come all sorts of other things like having to report very regularly and make its accounts available. The problem is, is that quite often retail investors don't get access to those that first time that shares are traded on, a, on, on an exchange that they often find out about them and then, and then buy them when they're already sort of listed. So um, this is sort of a section that sort of uh, lets you know when, when, um, uh, when the next IPOs are, are kind of due. So kind of like that. Um, there are some funds listed under shares and that's because of just the technical way in which they are traded. So they, they trade in the same way as a share, but it can be a bit confusing because of course, shares are one thing, they're to do with in individual companies, whereas funds tend to be portfolios that invest in a number of different shares. So um, that's why this can be a bit confusing why they're here. And you've got these two types, you've got exchange traded funds. These are um, what they call passive funds. So they just replicate whatever is in a particular stock market. They just copy uh, what's in that particular index. So if it's a FTSE 100 tracker, it'll buy the same 100 uh, uh, companies in the FTSE 100. Um, so they're passive funds and they tend to be quite cheap. Uh, and then you have these things called investment trusts and they're a type of what we call an active portfolio. So they have a fund manager, an investment professional who will select investments for that portfolio with the hope that it's going to perform really strongly and it's going to make some really strong returns. Um, so there's those two there and they, because of the, as I say, the way that in which you sort of buy them, that's why they're under shares, but actually they are really a fund. They're a form of collective, okay? So um, they're also listed here under funds. So you'll notice here we've got exchange traded funds, as I mentioned, we've got investment trusts, as I mentioned there. There are about 400 investment trusts out there, but what they've done is their investment analysts have gone out and created quite a trim list here of just 20, uh, which is quite, it's quite a nice way of sort of cutting it down. I mean, that can be a, the problem sometimes, especially with a big full fat DIY service, is that you can sort of end up with analysis paralysis um, not knowing what to choose. Of course, you don't have to go for these. It is their view. So, you know, um, uh, view them with a skeptical eye, but um, it, it, it can just sort of be, be a bit useful. And they, and they talk about how they, how they um, chose, chose that list by, you know, having a look at how the manager invests and how long they've been there and the performance and all that kind of stuff, which we do think is quite important. So that's, that's on that side of things. And then there are funds. There are lots of funds out there, about 400 investment trusts. There are over 5,000 funds, which makes it even harder to kind of bring that, that list down to something that's kind of manageable. Um, so again, they've created these, these kind of favorite, favorite funds. There's quite a few more. So they've got this, this, um, this search tool in order to cut things down. Um, and you can see here, you know, they sort of cut it down in these major ways. So what is the fund trying to do? Grow your money, give you some income, uh, invest responsibly. Uh, what, what type of fund, how does it invest? Well, I mentioned before we had in, um, ETFs, trackers, they track a market. So you can sort of go for those kind of cheap funds or active. So with a fund manager selecting investments, you can also choose that in this particular tool here. And then the third is sector. And this can be either, as you can see here, by the location of where that market is or in some of the assets here, like whether it's bonds or some property here, or maybe some more of those um, specialist and alternative kind of assets too. So th this kind of helps you out a little bit in cutting those down. It's not the best kind of tool I've ever seen in a DIY um, platform, I don't think. Um, but all in all, the offering is, is very strong at AJ Bell, so we give it five out of five. All right, next we're gonna have a look at some of the supporting services uh, that AJ Bell offer. And as you would expect, you know, there is a long list of, of extra stuff, because they've been doing this so long, really. They, they have thought of many ways in which uh, people might need support um, uh, in the way they invest, things like ideas and other stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I thought I'd just sort of have a quick look here. 
you know, one of them is uh, how do you want to invest really? And, and one of them is, is um, investing regularly, monthly investing. Um, and it's something that they do. And if you are investing in something that comes with a dealing charge, so basically anything that's uh, traded on an exchange, so we mentioned shares, but also there's other funds in there like um, ETFs and investment trusts, they come with a set of charges and then also their funds come with a set of charges too. And if you want to just do them at any point, then they'll charge you a fair bit. But if you want to scoop that up and just do it on a regular monthly basis, then you can get much lower charges as you can see here. So they do offer that. It's a much more cost effective way of, of drip feeding your money into the market because markets sort of swing around. So it's quite a nice idea rather than thinking, okay, is now a good time to invest or is now a good time? You actually just drip, 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 drip as your, your money, come, you know, your salary comes through, you just put some money into, into this service and then uh, let it be invested in quite a sort of cost effective way. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's quite, quite good. You know, the other one is rolling up any dividend payments and buying more shares. So if you don't want the income, you know, shares do sometimes pay out a dividend. It, um, that's some income. Uh, so it's when they sort of take some profits and say, right, we're going to distribute this to our shareholders. Um, that's called a dividend. But if you don't want that income, then what, what this kind of service will do is it will take that and just buy more of, this, of the shares and just roll that up. So they kind of offer that here as well. And then I think, you know, there's just plenty of, of, of free guides and, and you can sort of see that throughout, throughout the site really. Loads of ideas, um, loads of sort of extra, extra guides as you can see here in this, in, in this section um, to just help you feel a bit more comfortable in, in what you're doing. Um, and of course, there is, um, there's Shares Magazine as well, which if you have, um, more than £4,000 invested with um, AJ Bell, then you get that for free. And that's got plenty of investment ideas. So it's kind of good fare. It's, uh, I mean, I think Interactive Investor are probably the very best at, at content, but AJ Bell do it really well given how established they are. Um, so we give it four out of five. Okay, the final one we're gonna have a look at is fees. How much are you gonna get charged for all of this stuff? I mean, there is, there's loads of stuff that, to go through, so have a, have a good route through the site. But we're just gonna have a look at uh, fees in our final little section here. And it very much depends on what account you have and what you're buying as to what you're gonna get charged, which is all wonderfully confusing, but it's generally the way uh, the industry kind of works. The most expensive tends to be for a SIP in, in your pension. Depending on, as I said, what you're investing in, it changes um, uh, what you're charged. So any of that stuff that was under shares, so we mentioned individual shares, but also investment trusts and those ETFs as well, any of that stuff that's traded under exchange, you get charged this 0.25%, so it's an ad valorem charge as the value of your assets, but it's capped. So the maximum that they're gonna charge you is 10 pounds a month. That's 120 pounds a year. If you're investing in shares or bonds or uh, ETFs or investment trusts, okay? If it's just a regular fund, okay? And they come with some different names um, just to make things really confusing, but a regular fund that we, that we mentioned um, before, that is uncapped. And granted the uh, the fees do go down depending on how much money you have. So it's 0 0.25 up to 250,000, then between 250 and a million, it's 0 0.10. So that's just on that amount over 250 and it sort of gradually goes down. It means then that if you're holding funds as opposed to investment trusts, it can change the way in which you're sort of charged. So it's something to be aware of. And then you get these dealing charges on top of it as well. So when you buy into the fund for the very first time. So you've got this as an ongoing charge, and then you've got this when you're trading in and out um, uh, of different funds. And they come with, with, they are quite different in terms of the fees. So the funds that we mentioned, the ones here, uh, are a pound 50 when you buy, buy one of those. Whereas for any of the exchange traders stuff, so the stuff up here that was capped, that's £9.95 per deal. So it's not cheap. If you do more than 10 in a month, then the next month you'll get them at £4.95. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that can be, that's, that's you know, fairly pricey. It's why that kind of monthly investing and rolling up 
um, your investments and, and drip feeding it and not choosing exactly when you want to buy it, but just sort of uh, leaving it to that. That can be quite a cost effective way of doing it when you look at those sorts of charges uh, when you're trading in and out. And it changes depending on what uh, account you have. So we mentioned uh, a SIP there. As you can see, um, it's, a, it's capped at a different rate for the, for the ISA here. So um, you only get charged a max of 350 uh, per month for, for those, any of those exchange traded um, products here. So slightly different fees here, same on the dealing charges here, same on the, on the fund um, uh, ongoing charges there, the custody charges, um, but a slightly different capped fee there for your, anything that's exchange traded. And then we can see if we keep looking down these, you know, there are different fees for different things. So junior ice is here, even lower cap there. So depending on what you're investing in and uh, what account you have, there will be different charges. So you just have to have a look at how much you're sort of investing, um, what you're buying, and then that will determine um, uh, you know how much you're going to pay. So it, it, it's not it's, it's on the pricier end of things. Um, it's about sort of mid level. We scored it two and a half out of five. Okay, to conclude, there's a pretty wide choice of investments and accounts on offer. There's lots of stuff on SIP pensions, which they have been offering since the 90s. There's good supporting materials, but the website is a bit clunky in places. Of course, you pay for quality, so this is not the cheapest. Overall, we score it four out of five.